Sure. Okay, so this is Capital Improvements Committee. It is Friday, November 18th. It's 11.04 a.m. Um, this meeting is being recorded by the Capital Committee. Please notify the chair if you are recording. I don't see anyone else on the meeting. Um, and let's see, let's do, just to make it all official, let's do a roll call. Um, Jean Wall. Here. Christine Forgy. Here. And myself, Amy Prayad, I'm here. And then uh, Director Gilman, she is here as well. Yeah. I see her, thank you. Um, all right, so first on the agenda, we have members of the um, Economic Development uh, Department, Community and Economic Development. Is that your official name? Yes. Um, MJ Adams, Christian LaPlante. Nice to have you both with us. Um, let's uh, get right into the thick of it. Did you prepare something for us, like a little presentation? Do you want us to ask you questions? What, um, what do you prefer? Can I safely assume that you've got the materials that were in that we submitted to Liz? Indeed. Okay. Yes, okay. I have them right in front of me. Right. Okay. Great. And the, uh, the only presentation I have is a verbal presentation, and that's to share with you that we're back here before you looking for uh, providing more detail uh, than we did last year in terms of what we were looking for for uh, to engage a uh, architect, a professional uh, architect to actually do the bid ready plans and specs that we need uh, if we are to move forward and to make modifications to this building to make it uh, to respond to the uh, deficiencies that were identified in our self-assessment and transition plan, um, ADA uh, self-assessment and transition plan. Specifically, the bathrooms are the uh, area of the largest concern. Uh, they identified them as being difficult to access with wheelchairs. There's some uh, other accessible routes to programs that is also uh, noted. And we went out and talked with an architect to get some cost estimates on uh, what it might cost to prepare the bid ready plans and specs. Uh, one of the reasons we're asking for this, it's twofold actually. Uh, first is to get those so we have a good sense of what the cost is. We do know that um, there is a grant, a, a Massachusetts Office of Disabilities grant that becomes available once a year and the time frame is very quick. If you get awarded it, you get it awarded in January and you have to be done with the work by June. Ooh. Yeah, oh, and, uh, crazy. And, the state has no concept of time. Right. And then the other piece is, is that there's, I think I included the uh, the language in the House bill that indicates that there may be funds available from the state uh, to take care of efficiency and accessibility improvements to this building. So we are requesting approximately 20,000 to engage the architect. They will be doing uh, both the bid ready plans and specs. They'll do a structural review. Uh, they'll also be doing MEP, which stands for Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing Review, and then um, that'll include that. Like, the goal is is that we have a clear architectural stamped plan that will be ready to put up to bid, and a good solid cost estimate on what it might cost uh, before we move forward with accessing the funds to actually undertake the construction. I also requested five thousand dollars for construction management so that a professional could oversee and make sure that the work is being done according to plan. Um, I know that George, our, George is retiring next June. It's public. Yeah. Right? Okay. This coming June. Yes. June, June of 2023. 2023. And um, so I'm not sure who or how we'll be replacing that function in the city. I'm sure there's a plan, but I wanted to make sure that if we had the bid ready plans and specs that once you decided to put that bid, move into the work that we had good solid oversight of the project. So. Um, one question I just had, and, and this is, um, this had been requested last year and the pushback from um, council, I believe was that they felt this had already been done. So how do you differentiate this from what has been done? Sure. What has been done was a, a very um, cursory oversight of the public facilities, municipal facilities, as part of our ADA plan, ADA yeah. self-assessment and transmission plan in 2000 and, 2018. So it was really just a cursory overview. What They identified the deficiencies. And what we need to do now is I take those that list of deficiencies, work with a trained architect 
who can look at the building more specifically and develop plans to take to a point where we're ready to put things, something out to bid that says, the, we want to correct the deficiencies. What's the architectural plan to do that? And Perfect. how much is it going to cost? So that's where Perfect. we are now. Perfect. So that the first one was step one. Now we're in step two of, of making some of these things happen. Correct. Okay. And then there's the construction. If we decide to, to seek the funding and get the funding, the construction supervision will make sure that the the actual construction as it as it plays out is done according to code and plan. Perfect. Thank you. And it's an old building, so there will always be surprises. So that's why you want someone who knows about surprises and what the code is to be able to respond to that. Um, Councilor Forgey has a question. Please go ahead. Thank you. This is just for the public bathrooms. Is that correct? Yes. Um, are the employee bathroom, the bathrooms upstairs on the second floor, are they handicapped accessible? They are handicapped accessible. They, were, they weren't identified as being deficient in the plan. Thank you very much. And, and so the timeline for this, explain it to me one more time. Uh, the council doesn't vote until March. Right. And we're not expecting this construction to happen this year. Okay. But the Mass Office on uh, Disabilities offers up a grant. It comes every due every October 1st. They tell you in usually late December or early January whether or not you receive the funding. Um, this work will be eligible for funding. Um, and once they award it to you, you have to be done by June of that year. So it's a very quick timeline to do some construction like this. But you know, but this would set us this would enable us to be poised to be able to move forward and apply and know that we could do it within that time frame because we already had the bid ready plans and specs. It would also tell us what the costs, what we need to ask for in terms of money. So the Mass Office on Disabilities is one possibility for funding, but there's also this second possibility for funding in the House bill where uh, Greenfield uh, City Hall has been identified as a possible, there's a possible funding source. You, you could speak mm -hmm. more to that. Um, I think I heard you say, though, on that, that you haven't applied yet. You're not anticipating a notification that um, we would. That, Mass Office on Disabilities? Yeah. Yes, the application was due in uh, October. We submitted an application not for sidewalks. 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 Oh, OK, not 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 this. Yeah. We didn't we didn't know the cost. We didn't have a good handle on the cost. And we knew that even if we did apply for it yeah. to get bid ready plans and specs out to bid, and then construction complete by June would be a long shot. Yeah. So in one of the um, many finance bills that have gone through the legislature in the last seven months or so, so did this occur, I think, just before the session ended, uh, the most, the last session ended, they're in a new session now. Um, I was notified by Representative Whips that she had managed to get in uh, $500,000 and she left it very broad in this bill. And I can't remember, I, I feel like oddly enough, it was it was an economic development bill. I, I, I have to consult the email to be sure. Is it but a it bill didn't... or was it passed? Has, is it just a bill or has it- No, no, it was, passed? it's a bond bill. It's in a bond has bill. It has yes, it been it's passed. passed. Yeah. It's passed. So, okay, so it's not a bill. That's where I'm, that's, I'm, I'm okay. going from start to finish. Uh, so um, $500,000 is in this bond bill to, um, uh, to uh, assist cities in um, uh, their municipal facilities, uh, bringing them up to accessibility standards. So uh, that $500,000 is now moved into administration and fi finance, which is sometimes where all good projects die. Uh, but I was told recently that administration, the people at administration and finance have put it on a list to review. So, but that's, they don't tell you when they're going to, um, she will keep on it and try to update me as their steps have um, proceeded, okay. but it's gone further. It's gone further than I would have. It's gone f further than I would have thought it would, and I'm very glad to hear that. 
Okay, I'm, I want to focus on actually the timeline related to this. So I want to make yeah. sure, MJ, that I understand your request correctly, because I do think it makes sense, but I want, based on what I'm hearing, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So you're looking now for these funds, this $25,000 for um, the architectural stuff and the construction management, pretty standard, you know, and then what you're hoping is that for um, this, or uh, in, in the end, like a year from now, in the end of 23, you're going to be able to put forward for state funds to assist with this because we've already got the plans in place for the renovations. Is that correct? Yeah, my understanding is that th these funds that I'm requesting would become available on July 1st, 2023. We could, um, we would hire the architect immediate, fairly immediately. And by early October, when we have our MOD grant or yeah. when we're trying to access the bond money, that we have bid ready plans and specs by that time with a good solid cost estimate to know what we're asking for. If we end up going the mass office on a disabilities route, that gets submitted. We've already got bid ready plans and specs. We, once we know that we get that funding, we could put it out to bid and have con construction complete by June of 2024. Yeah, great. That's exactly what I thought you were saying. I want to make sure we were all on the same timeline. And I do have an, another question that you probably can't answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do we already know that the work, the scope of the work is feasible you know, based on the age of the building, the configuration of other areas that are close to these bathrooms? Like, is this something that we could foreseeably have an architect come in and say, sorry, we just can't make this change within this configuration? Or do you not know this yet? Well, I gave the architect who we were talking with, it's uh, Jones Wissett, um, the floor plans for the building. I gave them the ADA and the yeah. ADA transition plan, and they gave me back a proposal. So I'm assuming that in their mind, okay. it can be done. I think your question is a good one because the yeah. question is, what will the cost of it be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I believe I'm not, I'm not, you know, an expert on any of this, but uh, I believe that some of the challenges with the Levitt Hovey House, the library, are exactly these types of things. Like it just isn't worth it to spend all of this money to fix all of these things. And I'm just curious if we already know that about the bathrooms in City Hall. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we're a public building. I think we have a, an obligation to make a, a, a don't good disagree. Faith effort. Yeah, and, don't uh, disagree. You, know, you know, we did our transition plan a couple of years ago. We know that this is an issue. Uh, this comes up routinely in the Commission on Disability Access. You know, I think it, it's yeah. incumbent on us to find a way to make and continue to work to chip away at the items that our, our plan has said sure. we need to pay attention to. Sure. And if that, I don't disagree. You know, if, if that triggers a bigger conversation about do we need a, a new city hall? I mean, that's a, <laughs> I'm not going there. We're already building enough public buildings, but uh, but I, I have this vision of city hall actually moving to the third and fourth <laughs> floors of the parking garage. Uh, thank, you, thank you for not I saying do. the first national bank. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, it looks like Councillor Forgey has a question. Is that thank you, it? MJ? You mentioned that there's an architect at play in this particular time. Only, only to get some cost estimates on what uh, the architectural. If we were to go out to bid, or if we were to get these funds with the capital, we have to follow the state procurement law. So I okay. work with Laura, uh, Laura to make sure that we're getting the different proposals that we need to honor that. How, how is that person chosen? Is it just um, somebody is somebody doing that gratis for us or we're paying them? Uh, well, to to just do the preliminary piece. Oh, this um, it's something that architects do all the time. It's yes. So, yes. Thank you. So I didn't have to pay to ask for a cost estimate Thank on you. what this design services would take. So in hopes of getting Thank work, you. probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other questions? That was my question too. So. <laughs> oh, great. Great. Okay. Um, 
Well, if there's no other questions, I thank you all. The, the documentation was great. So I appreciate you being here with us. Like all those pictures? I had to send Christian into the men's room to get the yeah. photos. <laughs> In the women's room? I went into the women's room. Oh, okay. okay. Well, just um, to, I, I am certain that work will not be able to be done without moving a couple of walls. Is that turnaround area in there is very tight. I'm going to let the architect yeah, that, but you know, <laughs> well, it could be a unisex bathroom. It too. could, it could, could be. be. Yeah, do that. You're at and, uh, and to me, that I don't want to be the one to break the news to Kelly. So, <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> I'm not going there yet. <laughs> Was there anything else, MJ or Christian, that you all wanted to add? Anything we didn't cover? Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Before, both. before you leave, I yeah. want to say how thrilled I am about Wilson's. You've gotten every dream of mine <laughs> solved in one building. <laughs> no, if you wanted to buy a condo there, they're not going to be condo. Well, I, I, I am now a renter, so a renting is fun. Yeah. Oh, yes, I, I agree. Bedroom. Put my name on I, that I'm one. ready. <laughs> I'm ready to sign Joe and I up for a two-bedroom in, uh, in Wilson's, and I'll for take sure. a one-bedroom. Chris right? wants a three-bedroom, so there you we're go. set. We're good. And what I'll All share with you is that we know that this the, the housing that's going to come in at okay. Wilson's, it's not going to be for a couple of years, no. but it's going to prompt other upper story residential development. And I'm always already hearing about that. And that's what I'm really yeah. excited about also. Well, that's anyway, I just is. wanted to tell you how thrilled I am. Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of hard work. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Thank MJ you. and I got very tired of saying in answer, in, in answer to what's going on at Wilson's. There's active conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because we couldn't over, reveal any of it. Yeah, until closing happened. That was yeah. a condition of the sale. And we were like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we done awesome. here? Yes, thank you right. so much. Thanks. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm really late. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. But only by minutes. <laughs> um, Got about 10 minutes before Chief Haig is on. Are we taking a break or do you want me to text him and see if he's coming? I think we, I think we just wait until he gets here. 10 minutes okay. is fine. Yeah. I don't That's know because I haven't talked to him in days, but I don't know if he's planning to log in or be I'm here. Uh, yeah. Doesn't matter. It's fine. Yeah. Go try out one of those restrooms downstairs. <laughs> Please, huh? We don't have those cute little tabs this year. I know, isn't that fabulous? Uh -huh. Yeah, wonderful. You have to uh, get to make your own. The chief will be logging in. Roxanne, did you like uh, Marlo's email about the black blazer? Yes. <laughs> I was laughing. We were all laughing. I said, Angelica. So um uh the senior center had found a black blazer with um little gold emblem after city council and um they sent out a memo or kathy did that 
does this belong to anybody, right? Marlo responded thinking it was a vehicle. That <laughs> <laughs> was pretty funny. <laughs> He's, he's dreaming. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I knew the only black laser that had a city pen on it was Danny, so. But her. Well, the only bad thing about this, pre-COVID, I used to bring in lots of good food. Sorry, guys. Yes, you <laughs> did. It's true. <laughs> it was a um, treat. It was a treat to come to these meetings. With well, you, you want to know it? something? I, I, I appreciate people's time, and you know, I want to make it as comfortable for them as possible. Um, you know, because these meetings are long. Yeah. So. Yeah, Danny scratching at the door. Do you all have people locked out of there? Ah. She says, that's her door. <laughs> Hello, I apologize. Hello. I would have been there in person. I didn't know anybody would be in the meeting room. Hello. <laughs> no, no worries. Happy to have you, Robbie. How's it going? Oh, just ducky. <laughs> uh, I've right. got Bill, Bill Gordon's in my office with me. So. Oh, great. He's just shy today off camera. I'm kind of a big guy. I take up most of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill. Nice to see you. Um, so whatever you have for us, we are ready to hear it. And we okay. do have all of the information from, um, from Liz Gilman, uh, okay. with this request and the documentation. All right. So I'll, I'll keep it really quick for you. Cause ours obviously isn't all that, that large. Um, the, the major one that, that in my opinion really needs to be taken care of is, uh, obviously the station upgrades and everything else that numbers based off of what we didn't get for funding last year. So it kind of took out the, the um, dispatch portion, which um, it's been hard to work with a contractor right now, as I'm sure everybody can understand. Um, but we are getting close to getting ready to put the RFP out for, for that portion of the project for the um, dispatch. Uh, some of the work for dispatch is already done in the, in the meeting room, so we can make that transition when it's time. Um, but we haven't, we haven't uh, had a whole lot of luck with, with our architect until recently. So hopefully that will, that will uh, take care of that. 
Um, the major thing that, that you'll see is the uh, police cruiser replacement. Now, typically we would have done this in, as part of our uh, budget. Uh, we would have done, uh, you know, three cruiser lease, obviously with the, the massive cuts that we received. Uh, that was one of the things that needed to be cut out to, to save jobs. Um, so I don't have that in there and, and I don't anticipate having it in there for next budget either. Uh, we've already missed an entire year of getting um, replacement cruisers and we are now almost two years uh, without replacement cruisers. Uh, right now they are pretty close to a year backup for Ford Explorers, the hybrids. Um, so even if we, you know, get this approved uh, and get them ordered, we're probably going to be almost a third year without replacement cars until we actually see them, unfortunately. Uh, so this is really crucial. That's why it's in the capital request, uh, because I just don't anticipate us having uh, the money in there for the lease uh, to go forward. Um, the station upgrades, that number's, like I said, based on what we had before. So that doesn't include any increases in, you know, cost estimates or anything like that. But that would be for the final projects that we were not able to do uh, this time around. So Great. ours is pretty Thank simple. You. Thank you. Uh, questions from the committee? Um, uh, Councilor Forgey, go ahead. If I'm uh, going to go with the vehicles first, if I may. Um, I'm just asking this because I'm traumatized by my search for a vehicle. Um, <laughs> how much are each, how much is each vehicle coming in as? Uh, as yeah. I thought I attached that in there. You, you it might is. very yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's in there, they're 45, yeah, uh, 45, 44. Uh, give me yeah. one second. I, I've got that in a separate email, so. Yeah, okay. I, I actually, I can pull it up. Oh, I see it. I'm sorry. Terribly <laughs> sorry. No worries. I sent multiple emails. So I apologize. So it looks okay. like it's 62, my just over 62,000 so is what that, I see. That, if you look at the last time we purchased vehicles, um, is substantially higher than, than what we did the last time. But um, especially going with hybrids, especially with the, in, the increased costs right now with everything. Uh, we went 62. from, you know, when I, when I first came here, I think you're 48,000, we're now up to 62,000. And, and we don't put in, like, like, we don't put in an Irving PD package, right? We don't have that kind of money. Uh, so we're, this is really kind of the base model um, of the hybrid. So, and that is all we're buying right now. Uh, gas models are going to actually go away next year uh, for cruisers altogether. That's why you'll see all those uh, Tahos that you see over on, um, on the trail um, at the dealership, those are most of those are police cruisers. Um, th those are really? gonna be kind of your last gas ones that are available, but those are Chevy Tahoe's, not you know, not the Explorers that we use. It's but. so funny that you say that, Robbie, because I was like, who is buying all of these Tahoe's that are <laughs> sitting here? Yeah, they're grabbing them right now. Are black. They're gas. <laughs> uh, people are grabbing oh, the gas ones before they're gone. Um, I, I thought we'd move to Long Island and no one told me. I didn't know what was going on. Keep watch it. Uh, <laughs> gas, ones are, uh, gas ones are actually uh, less costly for maintenance. Uh, yeah. The hybrids are very costly for maintenance on top of the fact that our DPW currently um, can't address hybrid maintenance issues. I mean, it's not their fault. They're just not set up for that. Um, so we have to do everything with the dealerships. And when you're doing that, uh, timing wise, I mean, we have a couple that are sitting out there right now with check engine lights on for hybrids, and we're just waiting for times and fixes, to be honest with you. And the first generation hybrids that we have are riddled with, with problems. Um, so the, the newer ones, hopefully, you know, they fix some of that. But uh, that first generation, which we're running, is, is tough. So um, and that, 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 that's three marked cars and a, and a marked um, pickup truck. The pickup truck obviously would be gas. Um, it's similar to what the fire department has for a pickup. Uh, we don't have anything like that right now to tow street, the street signs and things like that. We're using cruisers to tow those uh, right now. Uh, we've got a couple with hitches. So we've been towing those around with that. So, so that's why you see that in there. And like I said, we'd like to get one of the gas ones before they're, they're not available anymore. So that's why that pickup's in there as well. Thank you. Other questions from the committee? 
I just wondered if you're dealing with all the water that's pouring into the police station with the money that you have from before. So that's that's part of that that current um, contractor issue that we're having. Um, one of the issues that we have found so far, and I, I've talked with um, with procurement, is we need to find somebody uh, that is a, an engineer in that particular field, and, and the ones that we have right now for the station portion, they don't do that. Um, so we had uh, Maui Schmidt came over and gave us their estimate what they think could be done uh we have to figure where where a water runoff source could be and we need a different engineer for that uh, because the water has to go somewhere and um, the best he can figure is right now there is no catch basin out there uh, that is functional so the whole back will need to be dug up uh, the other issue we have with that is if you come down here you can see the giant stone retaining wall that we have behind us they're just the the blocks in um chains basically chain link fence blocks to hold the, the mountain up um, those fill up with water in the winter those freeze and then you have to deal with that water which is separate from just the groundwater issue so it's it's going to take a little bit of time to get an engineer who actually can figure this problem out for us and and people like Maury Schmidt and a few others they they just don't have that kind of equipment and they don't have that kind of engineer and is the roof still leaking or has that been fixed uh, as far as I know right now, we don't have any leaks going on. Uh, and we usually find that out after the first real big snowstorm where snow sits up there. Uh, but we haven't had anything in this torrential rain we had. We haven't had anything coming in at this point. Uh, the dispatch situation will be fixed as part of the, you know, the rebuild. Um, and that's typically where we get at least one of our leaks in the winter. Uh, but we haven't had it yet. So hopefully whatever they did up there with the membrane is, is, uh, t is taking care of that issue. So. Because to me, water is the most, the thing that damages buildings the most. If you don't get that taken care of, there's no point in spending money on a building. Oh, 100%. I mean, water goes where it wants to go, too. So just because your leak is on the right side of your building doesn't mean the water's not coming in on the left. That is correct. So um, oh, I, I know firsthand, believe me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so as far as I know right now, I don't have any buckets in the hallways right now. So that's a good sign. Is that rain like that. this week was pretty pretty crazy? So, Krista, do you have another question? I need to be reminded by Liz. Oh, what did the council vote last year? The capital for. It was like nine hundred something. Nine oh six, I believe. Nine oh six. Okay, we've got it here. I'm so behind the eight ball and terribly <laughs> unprepared today. Well, we didn't um, have our books. I out of, yeah, I know. But out, I did look at the thing on the computer, but out of the 906, has anything been spent yet? Currently, no. Uh, the work that we've had done has, has been uh, wiring and electrical to move dispatch. Uh, that's covered already. Um, but the, the, major, the major stuff is coming all at once. Uh, the issue that we'll have is once we, we select uh, who's going to do the work, uh, State 911 will make the switch for us, and then, then the clock starts ticking, um, and we have 90 days to finish. Uh, and then they're going to move those things back. So, so as soon as all that get, kind of gets there, that's going to be a very fast-moving project. They're going to move everything out into the, dispatch, I mean, to the roll call room, and we have 90 days to get all the work done. So that money will fly as soon as, as, soon as that uh, first wall gets knocked down. Thank you. I do have, I, you have to excuse my ignorance. I'm really sorry, but I'd like to just ask these things now for clarification so I don't need to talk to you later. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> um, I'm looking at, it says new Sally Port. Yep. Uh, That's part of the new project. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so is that, Let's see. That was the same. That was the same as was presented last year. Is that correct? That's correct. The, the pieces in there are the are the parts of the project that was cut out of last year. So I didn't add anything different um, or revamp anything. I just used last year's quotes though, because I, you know, I, I don't think there's really any necessity to go back out to to do this all over again. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit more expensive than last year, but we can rework things um, when that time comes. But there's no additional 
pieces added to it now. So your RFP is for dispatch and a sally port and nope. the no, nope, no. Nope. Um, the RFP that's going out for this year is just dispatch. The, okay. the, the piece that was awarded to us last year, so that included dispatch, uh, the money to take care of the water issue in the back, and um, so that that's that's for this year's RFP. Um, there would be a whole separate one that would be done for this piece if it's approved. Other questions. I have one final question about the water pit. So the, you're going to use the money that was appropriated last year to to fix the water before you start this, the dispatch, I hope? Uh, th this The water piece doesn't affect the dispatch piece. They're two separate. The water piece is in the back side of the building. Um, that, that's affecting the back wall of our building. Dispatch is in the front. Uh, the dispatch piece is a slab. There's no water coming up underneath dispatch. Uh, the issue we have with the water is our, our back wall that's coming off the mount. Um, so they're both going to be done this year. So the water is going to be taken care of, but it's a separate kind of piece. It's not going to be the same people doing both pieces. Right. The RFP that's going to go out is just going to be for the dispatch portion. Uh, there'll be money left over out of that 900 and something to deal specifically with the water, but that has to be done uh, with an engineer who deals just with that. So it's a completely separate uh, job uh, than, than dispatch. And, and you'll be sending that RFP out concurrently or? Uh, we may not have to do an RFP for the, um, the water piece uh, because it's, it's so specific and it's in, in the, the money piece of it may not be um, necessary for that. that that's a, I don't want to say it's a smaller piece, but, it's, but it is. It's, it's a smaller uh, job and, and it's a very specific one. And correct me if I'm wrong, Liz, but if, if we don't have... Uh, we don't need three bids on something when it's a specific um, type of, like we, we don't have to put it up for a uh, specific type of engineer, right? For the Under water. Under a certain piece. dollar amount, yes. Yeah. That's the dollar amount. Yeah. So, uh, but it would be a completely separate process from the dispatch. Thank you. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to be so obtuse today. Please don't apologize. That's what okay. this is for. That's okay. So I, I guess what I'm asking is the 906 that was uh, allocate or uh, approved last year. Um, you're talking about the 185 right now and the 105. What else is that money going to be used for at this point? Is it going to be set aside for future uh, needs that are listed on this? Uh, they were, th that number is based on what was approved last year for the jobs that were that were approved. They dispatched the water. I think there was. What's that? Uh, that was no. That's for next year. They're talking about the money for this year. For this year, yeah. So we had, you know, the locker room issues and some of the other stuff. We don't know how much money we're going to have left over to do what. I can tell you what we don't have the money to do is the Sally Court. <laughs> like that's <laughs> we, that, okay. that's just a whole different. That's a different bird. Like so, we were looking at what we could do with the rest of the money as far as upgrading because our we had the locker room issue. Uh, we we have very limited. Um, lockers for the women in our building um, that was one of the issues that we had last year i don't know what that configuration would look like again when we did the big project it was going to be um it was going to be a lot of demo in the building i mean we were going to be putting in basically um uh non-gender uh bathrooms so you would have locker rooms uh that were just general locker rooms and then you would have individual uh changing rooms that had showers and you know, that type of thing. That was with the big project. The money that we have may only be enough to do X amount of lockers or, so we just won't know until until the dispatch piece is done, how much money is actually left over and the water piece, because those are, are the one and two uh, that need to be done. And then we need some fencing out back. So there's some money in for that because uh, the fencing wasn't all that expensive. So we figured we could get away with using some of that money for the fencing piece. Uh, the major, the major, stuff like the sally port that's that was cut out i mean we don't have the money to do that unless we get allocated this year thank you for the clarification i, I don't know if that helps or it, it does help me it, it does help me. yeah right <laughs> it still helps <laughs> other questions gene did you have another question all right so i think we've got what we need 
uh, Bill and Robbie, thank you very much for being with us. I can't stress enough how crucial it is for the cruisers, though. We're there. We're missing too many years here. We're we're going to start paying money that we don't have for repairs, and and we just we just don't, aren't going to be able to survive without them. Yeah, and uh, I mean, just since you brought it up again, I just and this is outside of capital. Um, is there? a plan for DPW to employ someone or someones who can I, help? Honestly, I don't know, uh, because I, I can only imagine the equipment they would need to deal with hybrid vehicles. Is yeah, I don't know anything awesome. about it, but I can imagine, yeah, the equipment's you know, gotta be pretty major. So I, I don't have an answer for you on that. I know that they're down mechanics as it is, but, yeah. um, but the yeah. hybrid, there are just, they're, they're a pain. It's a whole other thing. Yeah. Yeah. We've been taking our hybrids down to Northampton because we can't even get into to Greenfield because they're just, they're just packed with issues. Are they Fords? I can't remember. Yep. Are they Ford, yep. Ford Explorers? Ford? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. One, um, one position that um, Director Warner is having a hard time filling is the mechanics position. Yeah. And that's yeah. been vac That's been open for over, well over a year now. They're just not applying. It's not a matter of whether they've got the skills or not. By now, I would think anybody who would apply as a mechanic probably has those new skills, but it's just nobody's there. I mean, one of the issues we have with the hybrids is there's very few places that can reset those computers. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. you've got to find someone that has time to diagnose and reset them. Right, um, right. That's, that's a big issue. Yeah, okay. Thank you for that, appreciate it. All right. Can I answer I anything good. else in general for you? Welcome. Anything oh, else? Just... Looks like we're good. Thank well, you. thank you. Thank I'm you sorry. So Again, I apologize. I didn't realize so many people would be in person. I would have been there. Same. We're good. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. Oh, all right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Happy thank Thanksgiving you. to you. You as well. What's up next? Next, we have uh, at noon will be recreation. I have a question, Liz. Um, I don't see in the shared folder, which is great. So organize, thank you. I you got see, it. And, Yay! Oh yeah, yeah. I got it when you first sent it out. I don't see the schools in there. I only see them listed on the five-year plan. Did Christine not submit any documentation? For no, those no, 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 no. It's in, it's, it's in the book. It's, there wasn't in here. Much. So what I put in the shared drive were the departments who had this massive amount of information. It, okay. is, in the book. it is in the book. It's in the book. Okay, so yeah. I got to get over there and get my book from Caitlin, which I Sorry. will do. Great. Want me to send oh. it to you now? What's that? You want me to No, send it it's fine. I'm familiar. I mean, that was the only one I was like, the schools is in here and I actually know what that one is because I've talked about it with Christine. I so. didn't put the police in there because it wasn't as big as those other ones. But when, when you see what Christy and Marlo have, it's ungodly amount of pictures and, and paper. It's, and it's a, it's a, <laughs> yeah, that sounds I tell like you, <laughs> I love, uh, Christy did a lot of work, man. I, it took me yeah, quite oh, a bit of time to get all her stuff. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. Um, I love seeing pickleball in there. That's the new thing. Ah. <laughs> pickleball. They're being pickled in pickleball. So we have like, 15 minutes or so till Christy shows up. I do believe she's coming in person. I talked to her this morning and I think you will see her um, up there. That's my understanding. Um, I'm just gonna make myself a new cup of tea and I'll be back. I'm gonna get some coffee while you're doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> go to the bathroom. Okay. Yes, I could write on these little tabs. Oh. Uh, 
on your plan says Beacon Hill Bocce Courts. See, they have a page at the very front that says how much was and how much they spent. Okay, got it. Since these books are lucky now. Yesterday, I think it's when we could come and get it. Are you guys going to get the snow that Buffalo's getting? No, no. one's told us that. So okay. I, I just wondered if it was going to like keep on coming. <laughs> no, I have not been to the grocery store to buy milk and bread yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a barometer. <laughs> and, and I don't use milk and bread. <laughs> So there was money approved for the bocce courts, but they need more money. Is that what? Yeah. Still looking for it. You have to go home and go to sleep. <laughs> it's five up from the bottom. Who's after recreation? Do you know? I'll look. You have to look. Veterans was the last. We have veterans. Well, you know what? I'm actually confused school. on that because he doesn't have, oh yes, school then veterans. School. He doesn't really have anything for this year, but maybe he just wants to come in and talk about next year's. And, and he's new on as taking over. Oh, so that's the person whose name I didn't recognize. Right. right. Okay. Because yes. I didn't have time to figure out who it was. I figured I'd find out when I got here. It says this event has been canceled. No, that's a diff that, that that's because Caitlin rescheduled everything this morning. Oh dear. And not to pay attention to them. You know everything and I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I spent some time reading her today emails. Oh, okay, well, I didn't get there. <laughs> I don't get as many emails as you do. Oh, man. It's like, okay. I understand you're just killed with emails. Absolutely. We get slaughtered. Everybody, I hear Liz, get, Liz gets it. We get it. Oh. The schools are lucky. We just get... And, and the superintendent answers our emails, not us. Well, because we she's want got to speak, speak as a voice, right. not as yeah. a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good. I know between emails and let me tell you, even text messages are out of control. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, aren't we like? Aren't we lucky we don't depend on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know, what's hard is so many of like the doctor's offices and dentists and all that, they're now using the text too. Yes. And you just get inundated with things. 
Right. And then they want surveys filled out after you go. <laughs> right. Yes. I think that's a good idea to hire outside facilitators to host the community. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we did that for the Garden Club, and it made a huge difference. Yeah, I in think the, it's, in this particular case, it's just much better. And I, uh, I sought the advice of Andrea of Asia, because I know she knows anyone and everyone who can do that professionally. And these are, I've talked to both of these women there. They seem to be top-notch. We were trying to decide whether to disband or not. You know, yeah. And have uh, a meeting with a facilitator yeah, yeah. to say, okay, you have yeah. this opinion yeah. now. Yeah, that's kind of a... All right, doesn't look like I missed anything. No, no. I hear Christy in the office. Oh, there you go, good. I'm not sure. Check. We didn't leave ourselves some time for lunch, did we? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> This often happens, as you will know. <laughs> yeah, so I went to chamber breakfast this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ah. I'm on camera already. Jeez. I know. She is. It's so helpful. It'll follow you Good around morning. too. If you yeah, go out of view, it'll it. add another. Ready to go. I don't know where you want me to sit. Right there, it's fine. Anywhere you want to. <laughs> Where's your cute puppy? Uh, oh, she's, yeah. oh, she's sleeping. Okay. She's sleeping and eating. That's what they do. Yeah. Well, one more thing. <laughs> she's going to have to meet Frank. Yes, I know. Yeah. I'll be class. <laughs> so this is the problem. I never know where to look. Uh, <laughs> you, you should. You can ignore us. You can just look at the people that are in the room. That's fine. Um, 
So if when you're ready to start, we are ready for you. And we have those materials you submitted as part of the capital um, process. And whatever you want to tell us about them, whatever you have prepared, we are ready for it. Well, the first thing um, that we have presented is the uh, Green River Erosion Control Stabilization. Um, we've had obviously multiple floods down there, as everybody knows, with Irene being the worst. Um, but it continues to erode the section by the playground. If you guys kind of go up river a little bit more, it's further than where we swim, but it continues to undermine that area. We used to be able to get a, um, what DPW calls a skag, which is just a driving mower through there, and we can't anymore. It's only um, in one place, about a foot or less. And then we hit the concrete wall that the uh, WPA or the CCC built ages ago. Um, and then obviously if that caves in, then it's the playground. So we really need to figure out how to stabilize that. Um, so I met with a, a local civil engineer who put forward um, cost estimates, which is what um, you have in front of you. And we kind of have it as like a four phase plan for us at the river with phase one being the erosion control. And that is the $40,000. And then if you look further along in our capital, um, not this year's request, but future requests, we have um, wall uh, repairs, and then we also have uh, future bridge replacement repairs. Um, well, that would be a full replacement, I hope, so that we could actually drive a utility vehicle over it. Because mm -hmm. right now we can't even walk um, side by side, two people or two strollers, or when we carry the toters over, they all have to wait until we um, go back and forth to, to do trash removal. So that is the, um, the first request. Um, I don't know if you want to ask questions as we go or at the end, you know, what's easiest for you guys for a project or all together. Oh, it doesn't matter to me, Chris or Jean, do you guys have a preference? I, I think make the presentation and then, and then yeah. the barrage. We'll hear it all and, and then the question. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then our second uh, request is um, a longstanding request that we finally have been able to pull together um, for Highland Park. And it includes the, the entire ridge line. So there's some conservation commission land there as well. And we really need to do um, a, a wayfinding um, and trail mapping project where we have um, a more um, modern and emergency um, management systems so that when people get lost or hurt that our emergency response units can locate them. Um, I've had multiple conversations with um, um, Bill um, Gordon. No, not Bill Gordon, from the fire department. Um, uh, Bill Kimball. Kim, Kimball, yeah, he used to work for us. And um, and using the same um, what three words app um, to coordinate where our posts are and if people are hiking um, in this project. That's a great so, use for that app. Yeah. I love that. Oh my yeah. goodness. That's it's amazing great. to think that our entire world is in a 10 by 10 square and each oh, yeah. square has three words to locate wherever we are at all times. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Pretty cool. So we would have, um, at this, we'd have um, sort of the larger gateway kiosks um, at the major trailhead. So at Highland, it would be where we have the um, dilapidated old um, green trail uh, sign. Trail sign. Um, and then we would put one um, at the newly acquired land at the down towards Stop and Shop end. Um, not quite all the way to Canada Hill, but um, I forget what that little road is called it. Um, goes up by the um, the the um, bed and breakfast there, Stone Ridge Lane. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And then um, the other pictures, as you um, look at the um, first page of my request, is where um, there'll be posts where there's a division of the trails, and with arrows that go left for the blue, and it's one mile, and if you go to the right, it might be red, and it's three miles. 
Like we, people have no idea how far our trails are, myself included. Um, so that's what this is. And what's really nice about this is that this is also in conjunction with a CPC application, which is the Community Preservation um, Committee. Um, and so hopefully together funding will be able to secure this project. Um, I did work with the FERCOG to get an estimate on mapping costs. Um, so um, I know you have like um, on page two, like the equipment and the design um, and construction broken down, but within the design plans it includes the mapping. Uh, and what that would mean is that if we were able to hire the FERCOG, um, Ryan, who's the GPS expert at the FERCOG, uses um, a software called Ezra, which is all the GPS and CAD information um, that he would plot for us so we could figure out where each trail goes. Um, if there are new trails that the public has created, if we should keep them or um, remove them, if any of our trails have eroded so bad that we need to change them. Um, so he would do all the, literally the footwork of mapping and figuring out where our trails go. Um, and that was um, 15,000 within the um, preliminary design cost um, that you see for the 75 itself. Um, and then obviously we would need to, um, I selected the, the sample that you see on, you guys don't have pretty color. Here's the yeah, color. Pretty oh, that is nicer yes. in color. Um, I don't know where, to, if I put it like that, I think you guys can see it up there. I have, I, um, I have most of it. Oh, okay. And yeah, what yeah. I like is that it is sort of rustic, but it has a little modern feel. Um, and it also, like I was admiring and talking to, to Danny um, about this project and as she left our building, she looked over at the middle school and it has the same kind of um, steel cabling of the overhangs at the middle school. So she thought it was kind of cool how it all kind of ties together. Um, and this is just, you know, high, we're so, we're known for the ridge line, the, the hiking trails there. Um, locally and also it brings a lot of tourists in. So I think it would just be really nice um, to, to have this opportunity to, to make our parks um, more user friendly and people won't get lost. <laughs> so that was number two. Um, our third request this year, um, I think most of you were on Capitol. Well, Amy, I don't think you were last year. If you were, I, I forgot. I'm I was. Sorry. Yeah, um, okay. so, so last last year we um, didn't get the rest of the funding for the beacon renovation project, which is um, the fountains creating handicap access to the fountains, handicap parking, as well as the bocce courts at beacon, but on the direct street side, that little um, small section of land that we have over there. Um, we were approved the 50,000 and um, as a matter of fact, while preparing this, um, I finally got the final numbers for DPW to get the cost for um, creating the parking and the ADA stuff. They were just so busy with Sanderson Street that they had no time until I started to say, hey, I really need this because it's time to turn in for capital. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll get the rest of the money um, to continue with that project because only getting 50,000 um, about 17,000 of that is just the two fountains. It doesn't do anything with um, creating the, the pads to put them on or the ADA access um, to them. And, and what was that figure for the fountains? Uh, I think it was 17 out of, the, out of the 50 that I have. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm just going to write Yep, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that I was um, clear on that. Um, and I think, and then I have, again, because you guys don't have the pretty pictures, there's some more pictures <laughs> of, of the courts. And I will tell you that, um, where to put there for Amy and Liz, um, I will tell you I did some research this summer on my one year anniversary of being married. I went to Gloucester and they had uh, two courts at, um, at Gloucester and they're not as nice as ours are going to be, of course, because I always want things better. Um, but 
like there was just so many people around the courts. Obviously, we had a beautiful ocean view, which we don't have, but um, we have the rich and poet sea. And um, it was just such a nice social group of people. Um, they were older, they weren't kids, um, but we don't have anything like that in Greenfield for um, seniors. For old people like us. Yeah, myself included. They even had me play. They didn't, they didn't, I had to leave. They didn't want me to leave. Like they were just so happy to teach people yeah. um, about about the game. The beauty um, of it though, the, the sport or whatever it is, the activity is that it is for all ages. Yeah, yeah. Kids it was, can't play it. It was really fun. So I have lots of pictures. I even took a selfie. I showed the mayor that I was doing research while I was on vacation. Um, but so I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get the rest of that funding. Um, and in full disclosure, I also put in for a CPC for this, but as we know, um, between capital and CPC, um, we all have little pots of money. So if we can't get it all here, I'm hoping that we can get the rest at CPC or however that works together. And then the last, which I'm sure you guys have heard about recently is pickleball. Right. Um, there's a whole bunch of people in our community who are advocating for the expansion of our pickleball courts. Um, our first pickleball court in the county we built in 2017 with the um, Green River Park renovation and um, the pandemic definitely has um, brought that sport um, to the top of the list as far as activity um, uh, within the area and so much that I saw a, on TV, there is a um, professional um, um, fundraiser happening with all these famous people on Pickleball. Has anybody seen that yet? <laughs> oh, I missed it. Oh, I missed it. Darn. It was on last night. Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to see it. I was at rec commission last night. Yeah. Um, so what you have before you is a proposed site at Abercrombie um, property over by the center school. It is the only piece of property that um, the rec commissioner and I could come up with that is um, flat. It is um, not in a wetland <laughs> and has the potential for six courts. Um, the one court that we have at Green River is great to introduce people to the sport and the activity, but you can't play a tournament. You can't really do anything. Um, beyond having four people play over there. Um, so we have put together um, six courts here in a row, which includes creating um, parking because there's no parking over there. And one of the important things I wanna share with everybody is that um, now that the center school has been sold to a developer, um, there is no parking even for our ball field that's over there other than along the side of the road where there's potential for a foul ball to break a windshield. So creating this parking will have, um, you know, opportunity for pickleball and when pickleball is not in use and if the baseball game was on, then they potentially could park there as well. Um, the cost for pickleball um, in our research and talking to colleagues across the state is roughly about 40,000 a quart. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why the cost that you have before you is is thirty thousand. Um, so six six. I'm sorry, three hundred thousand. Thank you. Um, six courts is about two forty. And in looking at pavement and sidewalk projects, we put in fifty thousand for the parking. It's around two ninety. And knowing that costs continue to rise um, with inflation, we round it up to thirty thousand. Three hundred. Oh. 300,000, thank you. It's such a big number, it's it hard is, to say. It is, it we is. don't want the public to be missing. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you for clarifying. Um, and then not to take the um, wind out of Amy's sale, um, Amy has applied, um, or is in the process of applying for CPC money um, to represent the pickleball community. So that is also um, an application that um, potentially could receive money um, from CPC as well. Um, I should clarify, I have never even played pickleball before. Okay. <laughs> oh. However, the community is very large and very rambunctious. And one of the things that was happening is they were um, just wanting magically pickleball courts, courts to appear and becoming quite angry at the city because that was not happening. <laughs> yeah. And so I've since just, just to kind of 
stop the bleeding of like the city of Greenfield sucks. I've been <laughs> helping them to put together what they want in a process that, and, and kind of advocating that the CPA and it combined with the support of the rec department is the only way you're going to get more pickleball courts in the next decade. So let's, let's exploit this process here. So um, I'm not, other than wanting them to not badmouth Greenfield, I'm not affiliated with the pickleball folks in any way. I don't, I don't play. Although Joe fancies himself a pickleball player. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Um, so that concludes my requests. As I'm sure you have my master plan and capital plan, there's many more down the line. So hopefully you'll just fund all of these and we can move to the next year, next year. Oh. And then you'll be back for more money. Right. 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 It goes out a ways. So we own this land on Montague City Road. Yes. The city does, so yep. we don't have to buy land. Correct. Yep. Um, uh, refresh my memory. You didn't request a capital project last year. So the skate park. Um, oh, the skate park, park. yeah. The okay. 350. Okay. Yep. It's only yeah. the skate park. That's yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from the committee? The bocce courts, I feel like I've been hearing about the bocce courts mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, it, this, it, 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 I don't know that I have a question. I'm, I guess I'm kind of looking for like, what's the history here? Is it more of just like, we just don't have enough resources to get everything done in the time, which is what I would expect you to say, or is, is it, is it something that, um, something more complicated th than that? It's just putting it in the queue and getting it done or something more complicated? Yeah, well, the original request was not fully funded. So um, it was basically cut in half. And so we didn't move forward because um, I needed DPW to help me with numbers. And as I said in the beginning, they were working on um, multiple projects, but really the Sanderson Street project, which yeah. um, ties into the water fountain and the tennis courts. So I agree with Marlo that it made sense to sort of delay and hold that. They did, I think, put in a new meter pit knowing that um, we will be putting the fountain there. So there were some steps in progress there out of his funding. But now it's our turn to, to come back and hopefully get the rest yeah. of the funding so we can get them built. But they were able to do that with the Sanderson Street money that we had. So we've now decided water fountains are safe with COVID. Yeah, water fountains have been reopened, yeah, for quite a, for quite a while now. Because they're not open like in City Hall yet, are Oh, they? they're not? Well, we have bottle fillers now. Which the, is what- Once up there, they're open. They're right there. I don't know that, I don't know that there's even any out in the hallway downstairs, unless I just pass by it and I'm no, not aware of it. No, I think it's just this right it's here. It's just right here. These are, um, it is a fountain and a refill station. Yeah. Because most of the time, at like the tennis courts and the ball games, the, the kids, the youth will come with a water bottle. So this is our standard. This is what we have. <laughs> we have with um, at Lunt Field, at Davis Street Courts, at Vets Field, we put them. So this is the standard, the same unit that we put in all the parks, um, which helps with uh, Georgia maintenance and upkeep that if we need something, we know what part to get. I just want to know, is it Golden Retriever High? Because my Golden Retriever used to drink out of the one. And... Oh, <laughs> oh, she's that's, down here. that's what you, yeah, exactly. Well, they do have dog ones that are a little long before, long before. Yeah. Chair Pagetti, may I make a comment on that? So, as Jenny, I saw you had your hand up. We're not really designed okay, very to good. take, to take right. comments, but I, I would be happy to take your information in, in writing, like send us an email. Okay. Um, I just, yep, I, don't know, I don't know how to handle that. It's not really a committee that's designed for very any good. input. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, other questions? <laughs> no other questions? Come on. Really? And, and on the on the river thing, I don't see where you have other 
money for other years? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't well, that's, I didn't submit it because it's, it would be next the next several years. Oh, you so didn't. So like, I have my data. Yeah. So like, so phase until two, you kind of know what it's going to cost. Right. Like, like this is the first involved. thing that yeah. we need to do. So phase two would be like next year. So you fund all my capital requests this year. Next year will be re the retaining wall, um, and that's three hundred sixty thousand um, dollars. Yeah, it's on the, the five year. The bridge yeah, replaces. No, it's not though. Yeah, it yes, is. it is. Yes, the right. bridge, the bridge, oh, okay. I, the retaining. Well, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's, on, on it is, uh, it's actually 375. Um, the bridge replacement yeah. is um, <laughs> 1. 1.9. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure we, I'm sure you'll get that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, or we won't be able to access the other side of the river, you it's know. It's a shame. I'm teasing. I know, I know. <laughs> but there's also like, um, again, the park grant, which I've been successful, you know, to build the dog park. We have it for the skate park. Obviously, they need to share it for a couple other municipalities before we probably apply again. But um, I'm proud to say we're two for two on that. But um, and there's probably land water conservation funds for um, the bridge, you know, the footbridge and that kind of stuff. And for the river. This is the only place it's trying to change its course, or are there other places that are happening within the area that belongs to Greenfield? Um, I, I would say that the river has definitely changed its course. Like um, at a recent Conservation Commission meeting, um, when we were talking about the mapping project, we were showing a piece of land where the river has didn't used to be on their land, but now it is on their land. It just mm -hmm. But it's above above the fields there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they they do that. Right. Rivers. Right. Yeah. And if this is going to be a no. Mother no Nature is in charge, no matter what we think. Right. <laughs> She's in charge. And if this is going to be an ongoing thing, are we going to be able to stop it? Is my question on. Well, that's the reason why we need to stabilize it now. Um, the engineer, um, civil engineer, like this is he. Um, his name is Dan Garris. He's he's a local resident. Um, this is what he does, like any hurricane or um, natural disaster, that's what he does. He goes down and assesses and gives them numbers and that kind of stuff. That's where I got my numbers from. Oh, good. Yeah. And he doesn't so, think it'll be an ongoing problem if we stop it now. Right, right. Yep. I mean, we can also, um, I used to have my capital, but I pushed it way out. You know, I want to build my entire indoor complex. So. I That's remember that. Multi million. So <laughs> I would think forty thousand in the hotel, hotel, right? That's yeah. right. That's right. Because they're going to build my pool and pay for my parking. It successfully <laughs> made its way off of the five-year plan, however. It's still floating out there, Mary. You just can't see it. Yet. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I'll send it to you, Amy, if you haven't seen it. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think I have seen it. Yeah. Chris probably hasn't even. Oh, big I will. I'm, I'm the oldie on here. <laughs> Sorry, that's good. I was in the Hyannis okay. Rec Department last summer, and I, just, I said to Amy after I got back, I mean, to uh, uh, Christy after I got back, uh, I don't ever go to Hyannis and go to the Rec Department because you will start drooling. Oh, yes. That's why I haven't been to a conference in a while. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. We take we take baby steps in Greenfield. Baby, baby, park is I know baby steps, baby steps. I but I do have to oh. say that at the Cape, all of the signage on the trails is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because otherwise you'd be lost. Right. It, it looks like Liz has a has a comment or a question. Oh no, I was laughing. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Anything else about the rec department stuff? Any questions about pickleball or any of the other items? Is there any way to know before March when the council votes on all of this whether we get any CBC grants for these projects? My, so if I can answer that, my understanding Please. is that they're following the same schedule as city council. So like our applications are due the end of this month and then they have um, a couple months to review and call in the applicants and then they make their decisions um, share it with the mayor, I believe, and then it goes to city council. My understanding is it falls the same budget calendar, so money would be available. It's July 1, like Capital would. Yeah, it's give or take a week or so, but it's close to it, the calendar, the budget that 
the city's following for the budgeting. But it's not my problem, you know, if the city council wants to give you all the money and right, they right. give you money. It's right. um, <laughs> and obviously, if, if it was a good counselor's watching. And some of this money we would need if we were to apply, like, one thing I didn't mention with the trails is that um, there's a mass trails grant, and I've already we were, we're going to apply last year, but with the skate bar taking off, I couldn't um, put any more time into it for this project. And so, again, these two sources of um, pots of money, as well as working with Athena to write the trails grant would help. But I have to make sure the timelines all match up because that's the right. struggle is the timelines for each of these. The trails grant is open, I believe, in December and is due in February, but we won't get results until I think in late June maybe even July, which is, again, when this money would be available. Because I have a friend who lives in Northfield who does all of these, builds the stuff for for these the trails. Of, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they've got a quite extensive marked trail system. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, we would have to put out a, you know, a bid for this and have people apply. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Well, thank you for all your work, Christy. I appreciate uh, it. Thanks, Christy. Progress reports. Um, oh, yeah. So, progress reports <laughs> is the skate you park. You going on, Christy. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the skate park, I'm happy. I don't know if you guys saw the post on social media yesterday that the Kiwanis Club um, just donated um, $5,400 to us um, for the skate wow. park. Wow. Nice. Um, and we have finished the excavation, the drainage, um, the conduit for the cameras is in, and the handheld boxes. And I haven't been over there today, but um, Artisan, who's the, pour, the skate park um, concrete pouring people, um, they're going to start forming, um, and they're going to try and get all the angled work um, done before the snow flies and it's really cold. Mm -hmm. And then in the spring, they'll come back and do all the flat work. We have three months worth of concrete work for the skate park wow. project. Wow. Um, and we have a hard and fast deadline um, to meet with the park grant. So um, we, we're really pushing. Um, they're doing a great job. Um, I, I shared a whole bunch of pictures yesterday so you can see, but um, um, I'm really, really happy that this is finally happening. Um, and then the only other thing that's on that progress report was the 50,000 for the bocce that we had talked about and beacon. Um, but I was kind of in limbo um, about moving forward with that, but I definitely have to buy the fountain. So that's going to be the next thing. I just uh, spoke with Kelly in the treasurer's office about that um, a week or two ago. Um, so that's really all I have, Liz, as far as progress with, with okay. um, capital. Yep. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Thank you for yours is being like, here with I think us. In that report, yours is like the only one that has anything on it. So that's good. The progress report that we get. See, so that's impressive. Oh, we, we we put it individually in each department in the book. Sorry. Thanks. Oh, the book is very different. I get this from what I have in front of me, but I I will. Work. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'm gonna pick up this the book. Of it. It's right it's here. Come, don't be a stranger. Come get it. I'm gonna come. I I just this week has not gone as planned as we yeah. often appreciate. Yeah. All right. Anything else for the rec department? It's nice Thanks to again, see Christine. you again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. To see you. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you, Liz. Yeah. Good job as usual. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hey, I, I hope I'm the only one that shows pictures so you remember mine. You see. Here's a bad one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost good at that too. Oh, but it's always you know vehicles. Right. Right. Not very interesting. Rusty things. vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. You're welcome. So who's next? Christine at one o'clock. About 30. Oh dear. Oh, see, I need yeah. Break. Yeah. 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 You want to sit around and talk to us for the next one? Want, want to see if Chris can come early? Uh, she had a meeting. She has a meeting. Oh, no, no, I mean, no, I mean, oh. Chris DeMars, the veterans. Oh, that would be great. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah. I don't have contact other than calling over there, which I can do. 
Want me to go do that? Do you have his? Um... I don't. I'm just looking at. Yeah, I, I can get it. I was just thinking his won't be that long. I don't think it'll be long at all. And may as well get it out of the way. Yeah. And then we're finished for today, right? No, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what I'm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, one, two, Amy, I'm going to see Becky tonight. Do you want me to pick up your book and give it to her? Will that be helpful? Um, no, because I'll either I'll get the, over there on Monday morning before I come to work. It's not a big deal. Okay. Um, but thank you. Yeah, don't worry about that. Where I've got so many windows open, I can't even find my Zoom. Oh, there it is. There you are. be right over. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Roxanne. Sure. Does he have a tab in here? Good question. Oh, you oh want here to it is. By? Yes, he does. Okay. Yes, nice. he does. I found it. Hello. You know that was fast. <laughs> Not that far away. Everybody left. <laughs> hey, Chris. Very nice to see you. Hey, Amy. How are you? Living the dream every day, you know. Uh, how's, your, how's your little one doing? Oh, they're Is not they? little anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like nine, ten now? But yeah, uh, Joe is, yeah, he's 11. He's going to be 11 in a, in a few weeks. And Marina just got her driver's license. She's about to turn 17. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> big fast. It, it, everyone, everyone said it when they were newborns. It, ha it yeah. happens quick and it sure does. Yeah. Are you ready for the World Cup? Oh my God, I can't wait. I'm so annoyed with all the friendly matches this week that don't yeah. count for anything. <laughs> I still watch them and I still get annoyed, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I can't yeah, wait. Too. Can't wait. Hi there. Hi. We're waiting for now. Other Chris. Uh -huh. Gee. Sun's up at four drum and getting ah. 36 inches of snow. Yeah. 
36 inches. Yeah. I've, I've had 27 <laughs> inches, but never 30. That's I can't even. New York? Yeah. Not all in one snowfall. Yeah. You're yeah. talking about Buffalo? Yeah. 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 Liz, Liz I, will tell you. Oh, my God. My family's from Buffalo. And, oh. and I'm from Buffalo originally. Up to the rooftop, it has happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tom, like, yeah, that's really bad. But yeah, they're getting hammered right now. In fact, I just my my son had sent me a picture of what's going on, and the the forecasters are saying this is just in or the weather people, news reporters are saying this is insane. <laughs> yeah, it was even on NPR today, and they led off by saying, so snow in Buffalo is usually not a news item. However, <laughs> what's predicted to be coming is well, in, in D.C., we would get those big storms. I think 27 was the most we got when I was living there. Uh, that's a good storm. Oh, it was. And they don't have a clue. I'll be right back. Right. Yeah. So what's going to happen is there won't be any place to put all that snow when they're plowing. They're going to have to haul it away. Um, and that happened when I was long ago when I was in high school. The city was like shut down for two weeks. Um <laughs> And because of a, a unbelievable amount of snowfall, it was fun though. Yeah, yeah. When you're, <laughs> at, when you're in high school, <laughs> you don't have to find a hill to slide. Just all the snow you pile up and shovel, and you can slide down. Right. How would you get out of your house though? Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, that's it's truly, oh, it's it's truly a problem. I, I would be happy not to have a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good point. When they knew how to find his way to the cellar. Yeah. Come on. Amy's, okay. Amy's gone, so don't worry. Yeah, right. Oh, Amy's gone? Oh, okay. Yeah, Great. Like I'm Chris Forge, you talked about. Chris Forge. Chris Myers, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And Welcome I'm Jane aboard. Rawls. she is yeah okay sorry about that looks like everybody's back we're ready to go yes awesome chris thank you for being with us and we do have the documentation of your request and i should also say welcome to greenfield thank um, you. and sh and share chris and i go way back we worked at gcc together for a few years he was our veterans agent here yeah um and uh we are ready for whatever you want to present to us let's start or? yeah yeah, yeah, sure. yeah so uh tim originally had um requested for a few years in a row twenty six thousand to replace our van um and then i, I looked at it and it, the van prices have definitely gone up um they're right around 32 34 thousand for the same small size vans to replace it so I put a request in for 32. Um, then came the question I talked to the mayor about whether or not we'll fall under getting a grant for um, a hybrid or electric vehicle. So we really don't know how that's going to work. Um, my biggest concern, you know, we don't care what we have for the vehicle, but we have something big enough um, for when we do our, our flag details. Um, we have a lot of boxes, well, we have thousands of flags when we do that. And then uh, we also do um, you know, other events where we have 10 by 10 um, tents, chairs, tables. Um, so we just need something that everything will fit in and hopefully something where all four of us can fit in it. Um, <laughs> because lately, some of the training we do, I'll have to drive my vehicle and, and two of them will take the van. So we're, it's mileage, we're paying mileage because I have to drive my vehicle. So we're trying to cut back and not have to worry about mileage on the vehicle. You know, or paying somebody for mileage, it would just be strictly on our uh, one vehicle that we have. So, so I pushed it back a year. Um, I think Tim, it was kind of tough. It said like 25, 26, 24, 25, didn't know exactly what he wanted. So I pushed it to next fiscal year, 2025, um, to really give us a time to research what's actually out there, also available to us. Like I said, the, the main reason I put the 32 in there is because the price of the vehicles are definitely not 26,000 if we actually have to get another small minivan. Oh. Permuted. 
<laughs> sorry, sorry, thank you. Um, as a van driver, I don't think you can find hybrid vans. They don't exist. So that is the first thing I don't that I'm aware of. They don't exist. And I, I mean, just a standard minivan is going for like forty to fifty thousand dollars right now. Yeah. So I'm going to imagine that we're probably going to need more for this. Um, and also, like they're um, sorry, Amy. It's like the the City Pro Masters, um, and then Ford makes one also. And like I said, they're right around 32, 34 basic models. Oh, good. Okay. So and nothing I didn't fancy. know if we could get yeah. anything to trade in our van or would that just be moved around as part of the fleet somewhere else within the city? I don't know how that's going to work. Um, I, I don't know about this, but have we, ex have we um, explored? I would imagine that for veteran services, there would be grant opportunities for something like this. Do we know of outlets for that? Liz is Kind of nodding a little bit. Yeah, yeah. no, I think uh, Chris had kind of mentioned that a little bit at the beginning that he, he was going to be looking for grants. I would hope that that's something, not that we would have to only find a grant. I'm just talking to say. No, but you would our think options in the scheme of things, yeah. they certainly would have that out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I appreciate you explaining what it is you use the van for, because that was going to be my question is, what do we use yeah. it for? <laughs> Um, are there questions from other members of the committee? Very straightforward. Uh -huh. It is very straightforward. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that actually is all you have to do for us today, Chris. Isn't that easy? <laughs> yeah. Great. <Right. laughs> That's you got some fresh air. Thank you for running over. Thank you. Oh, yes. Well, yeah, it was a long day for all of you today. Well, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see that you had pushed it out. All right then. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Good to see Thank you. you. And Happy Thanksgiving. And hang out anytime. Hey. Oh nice. yes. Laura usually has good candy there from uh, oh. from England. Oh. Okay. Oh. I'll be there. See you later. Oh. <laughs> Take care. See you. Crunchies. <laughs> Sorry. I love. Is that candy. an English candy? Crunchies. Yeah. Is that candy. A, yeah. Yes. Right. He's yes. Just like a sponge candy bar. Oh yes. So well, it's so funny that you would like that because I associate sponge candy with Western New York. Correct. Because you don't Absolutely. you don't see it in a lot That's of other old places. Candy bar of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen a sponge candy since I moved on. So I'm trying to think of what they're. What are the? Oh, what like is it? I don't like know. A, a sponge candy. It's like. Um, and Mars. Oh, it looks, it looks kind of like, like the color of a circus peanut. Have you seen a circus peanut, right? Yes. yes. It's kind of the color of that, but harder. The kind of the texture too, but just firmer, harder. Like, you have to like kind divinity. of crunch it. Oh, like a nugget. Some like, like, like divinity, yeah, yes. something like that. Yeah. That's the texture, yeah. But that's not and English. I don't care for them. I've never it's cared not English, for them. is it? <laughs> It does. I, I wonder, I don't know where it came from originally, but you find them a lot. Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse. That's like so a, a thing. Candy is huge. In, yeah. In Buffalo. Um, the other thing is um, being close to the border in Canada, Cadbury's big in Canada too. That's right. And yes. they have coffee uh, crisps. True. Have you had coffee crisps? Oh, yes. Oh, those are excellent. Coffee it's crisps are good, like yeah. like a Kit Kat except it has of coffee in it. You know, it's really good. Whole new world of uh, candy out there. Yeah. Yes. You go, it's amazing if you just cross the border into Canada and go to uh, a grocery store. Oh, it's you so, yeah. even, Nothing. You don't recognize anything. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the Cadbury, and that's about it. Every Cadbury, yeah, yeah, Nestle, yeah. everything else is different. It is. Sort of a cross between. Oh, what is the one I'm looking for? My uh, uh, butter, buttermilk, what's your butterfinger? It's crossed between a butterfinger and a, um, yeah, I don't know what. That's what, it, what I'm looking on. Oh, this. oh it's, yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to send you some and you can try. Hey. Oh, Monday. Maybe the, the next yeah, one. Like okay. brittle. In December. <laughs> okay, well, why not? I can get it there, yeah. by and you guys can. We can do the taste testing, and you can tell me what you think. Yeah, and this, wow. yeah, this is the time Thanks. of year to send chocolate through the mail because it won't melt. This is yeah, the time of year that's for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah. Unless we have a heat wave, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is a possibility. You know, I would I, please, please have a heat wave. wave. All right, so there we are, are on for one o'clock for Christine. Yeah, okay. Christine, so, take a break. It looks like I have time to heat up my lunch if you all. I'm going to do that too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm we're just gonna sit here and watch you. We're gonna watch. Yeah. You're gonna watch us eat. Yeah, I maybe yeah. too because I left mine at, ha at the house. Uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. there's anything in there? There was Chinese food yesterday. I see what happens if I hit this button. Hello. No. Cancel. It must be on because it asked me if I wanted to stop it, and I said no. Good. Hello. 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 Are folks ready to get back started again? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Thank you for joining us, Christine. Sure. I don't think we can hear you, though. Are you on mute? I'm not. Oh, there you are. Now I hear you. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so we have the documentation of the capital request that was submitted. and. We only need from you whatever you would like to share with us about your request. So George uh, came to Eric and I, um, I don't remember exactly when, within the last 12 months, I think after last year's capital was submitted, but obviously prior to now, to share that the energy recovery units, there are four of them on the roof of the middle school, the company that made them is long out of business. Uh, we can't get replacement parts. And um, if they were to fail the units, we would have issues with heating and fresh air circulation through the buildings. Um, George, and while I am not a technical uh, person regarding energy recovery units, I believe George and Eric, when they say that is a situation we want to avoid. So, Heat and fresh air seem to be important for middle school. Um, so we did have the opportunity to write a grant from the state that was related to HVAC. Um, I did get that grant. We recently found out that that was approved pre preliminarily in one part. So the costs for the engineering study are approved. The costs for the units themselves are um, it's preliminarily approved, but they won't conditionally approved. Sorry, they won't fully approve until they have the actual bid, you know, the quotes from uh, the final process. So um, Eric and George, we're going to work together to get the engineering study done and the scope of work created. Mm -hmm. And then um, you know, we can go out to bid and then I'll submit the final bid to get approval for the grant. But at this point, the only thing I've asked for is the balance. So George had gotten an original quote of 490,000. That was for the equipment. And then we added on the engineering study because we need someone who's an expert in the field to work with us doing the scope of the project. And then, um, you know, so what I have is the balance. Um, you know, I'm cautious. I'm not sure that between the two, the grant and what I'm asking for that will cover the entire project. I guess it stands to be seen what the cost of materials and labor are by the time everything gets decided. But um, George's quote for 490,000 for the units was also for sort of top of the line, best of the best equipment. So, so that's all we need is the balance of the, of the project. The balance is 105068. That's what you have on the front. Of then the, it's got yeah. to be it. I'm trying to, I didn't make a photocopy of the page. It's in my, it's in my file. But if that's what I asked for on the Capitol, then that, that's what it is. Is Carol involved in this to make sure we have the, okay, thank you. Yep. 
she helped me with, um, she reviewed the grant application and she, George, Eric, and I met originally to talk about the project. What, what happened to Ella? I say, what happened to Amy? <laughs> There she goes. There she is. She froze a little bit. Yeah. 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 Everything froze up, so I logged out and logged yeah. in. Okay. I missed it. Were there questions? I have a question. We did ask a question. I asked if the bot, if the bat, if the um, balance was uh, in her explanation. I don't know when you froze, but in her explanation, she was saying that um, this is represents a balance on, uh, on uh, previous estimates. What's due? Um, but what I'm looking at when I look at your uh, narrative page. <laughs> I apologize. The needed amount, there's a typo in that section one at the top. It's 195. Yeah. Oh, good. Because I that's exactly where I was going. You were reading my <laughs> mind. I'm like, that seems <laughs> awfully right. low. Yeah. <laughs> it's <Okay>. 195. <laughs> Correct. So if you look toward the bottom good. of the green down of project costs, you'll see the engineering study was estimated at 40, the units were estimated at 490, um, the 40,000 for engineering was approved in the grant, and then the balance of the grant was 294, so then the difference between the total balance and the grant funding is 195,068. Okay, I got to put another, I got to put a nine on the five year. Okay. And um, do you have the grant or you're anticipating it? You do have it. I did. I, did. I mentioned that, that it was, yeah. um, it was, oh my goodness, conditionally approved. Oh, okay. The, the um, equipment, they'll need to get the final quote before they'll fully approve. But the costs for the engineering study were already approved. That can go forward. Any other questions? This is the only capital request? It is. Yes. Thank you. Um, it, it, if you don't mind, Christine, and I don't want to put you, um, uh, uh, the superintendent, <laughs> just yeah. for clarification, oh, what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get, Chris yeah. Forgey, I could see your face like, what is she going to ask me right now? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're going to ask me. Um, it, it, well, I mean, the reason for only this one capital request, I think, is important to, for this committee to understand. You are using other funds for capital currently. Do you have just a quick update on some of those? Thank you. Yep. So the phone upgrade project, that was what we made the request to reallocate previously allocated capital funds for. That financial order, uh, the first read went before the city council this week. So that the balance after that capital is reallocated is about 14,000. That's built into my ESER grant. We have budgeted $720,000 out of the grant to do security upgrades, which in part includes cameras um, district wide. The technology, I know last year the um, Capital Committee funded $100,000 in technology for the schools, which was appreciated. But between ESER 2 and ESER 3, we were able to budget almost a million dollars in technology for the districts. That includes interactive whiteboards, Chromebooks, desktop computers. Um, we are doing uh, door external and internal door repairs with ESER grant money. So I feel like um we have a funding source available and appropriate to do some of these projects and in some cases we need to do them now like the cameras and doors need to be done now so we're utilizing that resource and um that's why um in the conversation to be very blunt in the conversation about um settling contracts the conversation is challenging because if some of these projects would have to be um, prioritized along with the funding for contract negotiations 
and given what some of these projects are, that is a that is a challenge for me to contemplate. So, um, but that's, I mean, certainly if the capital committee wants to fund the 720,000, I'd be happy for that. <laughs> um, but so, so all of those things are being done with the funds that we already have allocated. So I just brought forth the one new project that we're collaborating with the city on, which is those energy recovery units. And we still have some projects outstanding. And between Eric and Marlo, I didn't think it would be, um, it, it's, it makes no sense to continue adding on projects that we don't have the staffing to accomplish. So this year, we'll reevaluate any other projects and then um, you know, move forward with a, a capital request next year. Thank you for that. Other questions? Quick and dirty. Yeah. Thank you very much for speaking Perfect. with us. Thank you. That's it. I apologize. Thank you. For my, I apologize for my typo, but thank you for. Um, well, it got caught. So that, that fixes yeah. it. it did. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye now. Okay. Have a good weekend. Bye. That's everybody for today, right? So we're good. It is. I did want to let you know uh, that we just discovered that Chief Strayan has not been scheduled. So um, I think Caitlin ran out of time with the times that we offered her. I believe that that was the issue. Oh, okay. It's she possible. had told I mean, us that we didn't have enough times for all, everyone to be scheduled. Okay. So uh, we did go back and do at least two doodle polls. We might have done three. I don't remember. Um, to try and find some more times. But I thought there was something yesterday about maybe scheduling people the first week of December. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. So we'll, uh, yeah. Yeah. Was he the only one that's not scheduled so far? I, I think that conversation about the first week in December was precipitated by the fact that Chris was not able to do it, but then she was able to come, Christine DeBarge was not able to do it, but then she was able to come this afternoon. But yes. Um, he would now be at least one. I don't know of anybody else. It looks like, is GSET not scheduled? Oh, GSET, that's yeah, right. I, I, in the back of my hand, I know. So John, um, I think he's on your next meeting though, whatever that is. That's Monday. Monday. Yeah. Yep, TPW. Um, Liz, can I, I, can, can I? Go ahead. Can I ask a question of Liz? So when we talk, what, what legal deadlines are we up against with capital? What is a, a policy piece so, and what is a legal piece here with capital? So we send out a schedule every year and the entire municipal calendar depends on things being done at a certain time. No, I get that, but I'm, 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 my experience in the past was that we didn't start our capital until January. No, so I, maybe long ago, but. Well, long ago was 20 years ago. So okay. that's what so that's why I'm saying my experience in the past was that we did not start capital until January uh, for a number of reasons. But I'm wondering, are we violating any law at this point, or is it just preferable that we start no, no, the capital? Because actually it was Ways and Means who said we really need to know what our capital is before we go into the operating budget schedule. Okay. And so we would, they wanted to see it before um, the um, operating budget was being prepared. You sure. know, so in other words, you had to know certain things. Um, secondly, um, if you end up, there are some things that sort of have to be determined in far as funding sources with the capital that need to be done before we look at the sources for the, the operating budget. So, um, and then also I would say is that you have no idea how much, well you do, how much work <laughs> these departments put into their operating budgets. Yes. As well as Marlo and the two chiefs and Christy. It is horrific to try and do those all at the same time. You just can't and do your jobs and meet all the deadlines. You just can't. 
Okay, for, so right now, and again, if I'm behind the eight ball, because I haven't done my homework, I apologize. But um, have we scheduled deliberations yet? Does anybody know that we have? Okay, so um, the, the point here is to get uh, everybody reviewed and then we do our deliberations. So helping, uh, so we are helping department heads by doing this at this particular place in time. Well, you're uh, also helping, time. helping you. the operating budget. Uh, yes. The okay. mayor, even though you're deliberating, there's another step with the mayor, a big step. Yes, I, I understand okay. that. All I right. do. Um, okay. But I am wondering, I mean, uh, what I, I guess I, I need to just say it. I don't want to be allocated to a half an hour for deliberation. Oh, I don't think it needs to be a half hour. I don't know who said that. That's, this is what everything has done um, to interview people. I'm just wondering when it comes to our deliberation piece, um, are was, we, are we um, able to schedule more time for ourselves or multiple days for ourselves to deliver? So what we used to do, what we have been doing re sure. in recent years is we budget one meeting just for the voting. Yeah, Del deliberation and voting. Okay, yeah. so one meeting. Okay, and it could be two meetings if we need it. I think, uh, and I think last, if my, if my memory is correct, I do believe last year we had a final discussion deliberation meeting that was scheduled for two hours. I could yeah. go back and look at my calendar. Okay. It was a chunk of time. Yeah. Okay, very right. good, thank you. And I would expect we could, sh we should and could take all of the time that we need to, to deliberate. I don't, oh, I don't absolutely. see a problem with absolutely. that. Absolutely, there's no, reason to say yeah anything. within that within that uh, original schedule you've got, right, and in fact, you've got last year, oh sorry last year we finished so early yeah. i had had tentative ones put in in case we needed more time and people couldn't um yeah. make the department meetings and we actually used one of those time slots um for an entire day to vote your schedule that was sent out in September by Liz allows you December 1 through 2 just for additional meeting time with CIC if necessary. So thinking of the chief, chief strand or whoever, John. If so we have the ability then to call back an, a department head if we want to discuss yes. a certain thing. Oh, then, you, then you have December 5th through 9th for votes on capital improvement. So you've got a string of four days there okay. that you can devote either one whole day or however you want to do it. Go Just down. let Kayla know and she can. Okay, or I can have her send around a doodle poll. You you tell us what you'd like to have happen. I just want to make sure that um, and forgive my ignorance and uh, I didn't do my homework uh, at this point, but um, I just want to make sure that we have enough time to vet uh, any significant pieces that may arise oh, yeah, so from our deliberations. Okay. Um, you know the the other thing too is we all experience between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right. You lose so much time. I agree. And and so and you get behind in other things too because of that. So that's the other reason to keep this sort as best on track as possible. Okay. So this is this has evolved into a particular practice for the city. That you well, again, I mean, again, like my frame of reference yes. is 20 years ago. Right. Now it's different. So this is what the evolution yeah. has. I, has I guess because you know I always I went by Lane Kelly's memos too. She always had it in this time time frame. So you yeah, know I I do I have I mean I have similar concerns to Chris about this process. The first thing is this calendar, which the timeline, totally helpful, totally appropriate to put a timeline together. But those dates are arbitrary, and we are being asked to uh, to schedule as if those dates are dates are not arbitrary. No, so that, there's, there's whole weeks of time. We're just saying when that's right. But we out, were we were told choose. over and over and over again by Caitlin that everything, every one of these meetings had to be done before December, and that's not actually true. It's a no. Practice. I know you want to not have to. No. 
Correct. Part of this is a transition because this is the first year that really Caitlin tried to do it all. No, normally I was doing this. So there is a transition piece. Well, and this. I mean, the other piece of it is still unresolved. I have explained what I feel the ordinance that, that created this committee says about how it operates. And I have asked for the mayor to not speak. And that was not, that hasn't been accommodated. And I think that this is, we need to resolve this piece of it as well. Um, there, the, the ordinance does not have a space for the mayor in this process. We as a committee should be able to speak with department heads about their needs without having the mayor present. I think that's a really important piece of this. And it was solidified for me, Liz, when we asked about the bond for the half million dollars for the fire station. I asked you, what happens if this committee votes it down? And you said nothing, it just goes on the documentation that we voted it down. The mayor can do whatever she wants with her budget in the end, but there should be some way for the folks who are making the ultimate decisions about this budget in co collaboration with the mayor to have information that is uh, more objective and, and a different view of who of what the priorities should be for capital spending. And I, I agree, the ordinance was not followed for a very, very, very long time. It was created in 2004. And what I've been told is they weren't open meetings. They weren't public meetings until Otis started. That's true. That's and I have, I, I, and, and, and I feel like- and, So they and, weren't I, posted meetings, yeah. Right, I'm and I, I feel like that's a huge step. The yeah. next step is to resolve, and maybe the ordinance needs to be reframed but we need to resolve this piece of this committee isn't able to operate currently independently. And I think that piece uh, it, it sh should be addressed. I, I don't think that we need to have the mayor and this committee no, I would working together. You, I would tell you that, um, well, as, as the mayor had said, she does have the right to be on any committee, but I will. Well, and then the ordinance does need to be fixed because it's in conflict with what the mayor is saying about the charter. So the ordinance does not have a place for the mayor in this committee. And that's fine. Okay, I can be ex officio wherever I want. I, I, I just think you can do whatever you want with your budget anyway, Roxanne, when, you're, when this is all said and done. It, it, you don't need to be here. No, I, I, I want, you know I I want an independent body to be able to do this. So uh, Liz, I'll, you and then Jean's had her hand up. Sorry, already, Chris. I'm sorry. That's um, right. So I can tell you just from my experience, and Jean probably can too, that Mayor Martin wasn't generally in on the Capitol Committee meetings. Personally, I think it's um, a time issue, an efficiency issue, you know? Um, for the mayor to hear, like, and not have the departments have to go through it twice, you know? Um, so I'm thinking, no, honestly, with the departments, because otherwise she she's now going to have to meet with them again on Capitol, and they're going to have to get to go through it two times. Oh. So um, that, that that's my only point on that. I understand what you're saying. Um, Jean, oh, Jean, go ahead. As the old person on this committee, <laughs> my understanding of when I was asked to serve on it back when Lane was running the committee is that I was being asked as the chair of uh, planning and construction because planning and construction was to start the process of reviewing the capital projects. And then we would make a recommendation, planning and construction would tell this committee uh, what we thought, and this committee would then meet to tell the mayor what we thought. And, and the purpose of all of that was to have lots of different people looking at it before they, it went to council. And Mayor Martin did whatever he darn well pleased with whatever we recommended, which was fine. But that was the point that then the then the council would say, okay, planning and construction said this, the capital 
Improvements Committee said that. And so then the mayor said the, fi the final thing. I, th I thought the process was just to make it more transparent for the council to know the process. Yeah, Chris, my, go ahead. My comment <laughs> is that my, again, going back 20 years or more, my experience is that I can tell you I never attended one of these meetings as mayor, never did. It was Blaine and the committee. And then, you know, uh, however we worked on getting the information from the department has, which usually meant a one-on-one -on -one with the mayor. Uh, yeah. that, was the way, that was the process. That was the way we worked at this point. It's the way I thought about it as mayor is that it, it kept me out of the loop so that I could independently make decisions. Um, what I thought was necessary for the town. Um, I did not accept everything that came through with um, from the committee at all, but it just gave a, le uh, a level of, I don't know what the right word is, maybe insulation or something like that, like removal. So you can say whatever you want. You can ask for whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. But um, and, and then, you know, there's no repercussions from that when you go to talk to the mayor about your budget. I, I think that's very well said. I mean, that is my concern about this as well, is that the department heads don't have an opportunity to really talk candidly without their boss there. And I think there's a value in that. I also see, Chris, as um, in your role on council, I see over and over again with you and other counselors, how did X body vote on this? How did you know the subcommittee vote on this when you're trying to make a bigger decision about what to do? This is just one piece of information that you know broadens um, what is out there for the mayor and others who vote on the budget to consider. I, I don't I don't know I don't know if I'm being very clear, I, but that's how no, I no no I sorry can I just add to yeah, that? Yeah, and then Jean. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, so a while ago when Otis was chair, I had suggested that they come as a committee to give their recommendations when the capital was being voted on. The to council, come to council. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So council does get the actual tabulation of the votes. Yes, approved, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But I had suggested that you might want to consider as part of the process going to, to council as a committee when we're going through the capital and stating your rationale on your recommendations. That, but you know, it's people's time, honestly. So I, I up that. to you. Yeah. Well, I I think you know I think we're um, when I look at what's set up, what's documented for how we're supposed to approach the work. I'm trying to do what is laid out for us. I understand the piece in the charter about the ex officio membership that conflicts with what this says. Um, and I feel like it's a strong enough reason to say, please, Mayor, <laughs> let us meet with your people and decide and not have that, um, that extra dynamic of also having you in the room. Because I mean, ultimately, like I've said a couple of times, you can do whatever you want with your budget. This just gives another piece of information about where others think that we should prioritize the funds. Um, and I, it's it's it just it feels very um, it feels unsettled and it feels like there's this tug back and forth when this should just be uh, an information gathering and a just you know a a, a helpful resource um, and it, for the city and it feels like there's a power struggle going on and I'm I'm not comfortable with that piece of it. Um, Jean, did, did you have something else you want to say? Go ahead. Yes, I wanted to say that Otis and I invited the mayor when she was first elected to come to the capital improvements meeting so she could see how it all operated. And at that time, Jordana did not come to the capital improvements meetings for whatever reason she didn't come, which I don't even want to think about. But it was not an intention, Mayor, to have you come forever. It was an intention just so you would, as the new mayor who had not participated, so you would know 
how we worked and, and what what the process was. And you told me during the charter review that planning and construction was not to evaluate the uh, capital improvements and I have honored that, but I think that that's a mistake in in how we operate. So that's, mm. that's what, all I've if got you to know, say. If anyone knows, what does the charter say about planning and construction and capital? That, that we're in charge of all the buildings in the city. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that what Gina's speaking to um, was before me, and I. But I do remember it being said that they had Jean on because she was chair of planning and construction. Mm -hmm. So it was like um, a liaison between capital and planning and construction. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, honestly, like, I do think it might be worth it to review the ordinance that puts this committee in place. I'm also not convinced that the schools should trump everyone else with a seat on this committee. I know that we're responsible for a huge part of the capital expenditures and that we have control of, of many of the buildings. But I, I, I don't know if that's if the right thing is to put um, someone from the schools on this. I wonder if there can be a process where we ask the council to review the ordinance for capital planning and improvements after we're done with our work for this year. It would have to be a charter change too. Yeah, it would be. That's fine. I mean, I think that's yeah. fine. I don't care about something. I just think okay. there's something. There's that's something a long process. About this. That, yeah, that's, uh, no. Well, that's fine. Okay. I mean, I, that okay. stuff doesn't bother okay. me. I, it has okay. to be dynamic and it has to work for what we have in writing has to be what we're doing in practice. And, and it, it is evolving right here still. Um, and we have to be willing to make changes when stuff doesn't work. Chris. Yeah, I, I would be, no, I would not be in favor of a charter change. If you're speaking about the fact that the mayor can serve as an ex officio, can do everything to vote. Um, that is a significant uh, power, and I would defend that. Yeah. That I would not be, I would not be in favor of changing the charter in that regard. The ordinance, however, um, can be modified and worked on, um, and I don't think it has to be done in contradiction to the charter. But I think it can clearly. Um, do a shall rather than a may uh, on, on certain things. I think that language may be able to be modified and that would be with A&O. And if there's a desire to do that, I could you know, contact Dan Quinn or I could bring it forward at chair's meeting uh, that we need to look at this. Well I, well, I do think that someone from the school should always be on it. And I know that the fact that Say you why. and I are- Say why. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> because the schools have control of a huge number of buildings in the city. It did not work for the superintendent to be on it because the superintendent had a dog in the fight. And, and we're just three volunteers who are citizens of Greenfield who are working to protect the buildings of Greenfield. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Now. I don't I don't disagree. I just am very conscious of, gosh, the schools get such a limelight in this, and <laughs> that's all. And, and wanting to be as objective and transparent as possible in the process, because we're really looking out for the whole city and not just, you know, the schools. And it's also unusual at this point to have the chair of the school committee and two vote, you know, a voting member of the school, two voting members of the school committee on this body. I think that's an anomaly. So last year. Yeah, um, Roxanne has been waiting patiently. Go okay, ahead, sorry. Roxanne. Go ahead. So this conversation is very helpful uh, to me. I did sit in in 2019, and that was appreciated. Uh, the practice continued. Um, I don't find it onerous. I don't honestly think my department heads find it onerous either, uh, the department heads, but it's a helpful conversation. I definitely think your your the uh, uh, code could be revised, if nothing else, just to clarify the process. Okay. Uh, because yeah. it's a very, it's a very uh, broadly worded code. There's no question about that. 
uh, of specific reference to this year, because we are in a transition with finance directors as well, uh, and I wasn't sure if Liz would be available for the, all of these meetings. And we have a finance director at that point, didn't know when she was coming on. And as it turns out, she will be here. I don't know that I'll make her come on Monday, her very first day, but maybe it'd be interesting. And it's not <laughs> like she's not uh, a, attuned to government, um, municipal government by any means. So, um, but th that said, I, I felt very important that I, I actually be here, if nothing else, to be able to hear what the department heads have to say. And I am mindful of their time, but, uh, you know, they could certainly meet with the capital. I mean, I'm speaking for myself. Um, I'm not, you know, it, 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 my name, Roxanne Wiedegartner, doesn't appear anywhere in the charter or the code. It's the mayor. Um, so, um, the the important thing i think is that you know we'd be able to one be mindful of people's time all of our time but also you know i could certainly going forward meet with them right after they are in here you know for it, it really kind of depends on how we look at it going forward and how we might resolve the issue of the code and what is set up to but it's been very helpful to hear the full history of this um but I do think the clock or the timing, the schedule is advantageous to how we get our budget, overall budget done. That is important. Um, and to speak to the school committee piece, yes. Um, I think someone from the schools, school committee, whatever, if we're talking capital, I don't know who it would be. It could be. I used to go for the school. Yeah, I was just going to say, it could be, it could as, be a, as a business manager. It could be yeah. a business manager. It could be the business manager, or uh, you know, so, uh, like Eric, what, your facilities person deals with the facilities. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't always. Sometimes it deals with technology and things that they don't know. So it's a it's a very a capital isn't just a building. Yeah. Um, a capital expenditure isn't just a building, but that's, that could be clarified. I did not believe the superintendent of schools should be <laughs> sitting at, uh, as a member of the committee either. Yeah, so I mean, it, it does sound like we have a handful of things that should be addressed by cleaning up the, the ordinance, the code. Um, and I would, after this process for this committee is over, I'm happy to take that on. Um, to w bring it forward to the council and maybe uh, Councillor Forgy will assist me with that process. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's all manageable. I think it's simple things. Um, yeah. And I, th I think more than anything, it probably got lost somewhere along the line because when I first knew la a year ago, a little over a year ago that I couldn't possibly ask Christine to be on one more committee or do one more thing, um, she appointed me as her designee here just because it, it was the schools were overwhelmed at that time. And I was like, what is this committee and why is it only defined on Liz's timeline that goes out in that memo? You know, the, we all know the memo. It's got the city thing of it and it's got the calendar of everything for capital improvements. And I said, what's this committee? And you have it in parentheses specifically defined in the timeline. And I, I couldn't find out where it came from. And Danny is actually the one who helped me find that there's an ordinance that created this committee. And when I read the ordinance, I said, oh, there's some problems here because this isn't how we're operating. All I want to do, whether it's change the ordinance or it's, you know, change the committee or, you know, whatever, is just make sure we're doing what we say we're doing in our documentation. That's, that's all. So however we can agree to work that out, I think we should move forward with that and um, once the process is over. Well, well, my understanding under Mayor Martin was that he met with the department heads and went over what their capital uh, requests were going to be before it was ever started. Yeah, and I think he, that, yeah. And, and then he would convey to me as the chair of planning and construction, the ones that he thought I should meet with. And, and then we had capital improvements. So to me, that's, that was the way it operated in yeah. that sense. And then you don't need to come here to hear what their requests are, Mayor, because you would already know. Yeah. 
that you and I think I think that's it. just a different way of managing and obviously a very different exposure early yeah. on in the mayorship to where the the committee sits it all once you talk about it it all kind of makes sense um I think we just we want to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing that that's it so um, and, and I really and I really don't know what I as chair of planning and construction have to do with this since I'm not discussing it with my committee. You know, it's a it's an awkward I place think, for me to be too. I think you have an institutional yeah. knowledge from that committee that can be pretty critical at this table. That's my opinion, is that you have an understanding of yeah. what we have prioritized over the years, what we are working on currently. Uh, what has been brought to your committee for consideration, um, you know, and it, that that piece to me, if it, <laughs> if you say the schools make sense, I say absolutely planning and construction makes sense yeah. for being on this committee. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with that, uh, Amy, wholeheartedly. Um, I mean, I, I suppose I su <laughs> there's no reason why somewhere in this time frame, you couldn't have a capital improvement committee meeting that went over at least what was recommended. Oh, for, I, I think at if we're looking at a process. Yeah. Are you talking about at planning and construction? Yeah, to, at planning and construction. Them? Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I think yeah. Jean, I, I don't think that in any way that this is operating in isolation from planning and construction. Yeah. yeah. Well, and my, my goal is to have planning and construction go visit every building and with the people who work there and find out all the horrible things like in City Hall was our next meeting, <laughs> that we yep. need to go and see how bad it is. I, yep. Pictures right here. So that, you know, yep. pictures, pictures are one thing, but to have people no, who no, are, You really have to see it. Yeah, 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 agreed. Chris, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, it, it's a little off topic, but it's important. All right. Um, when this, when, to start the process in January, just gonna say, means that, uh, in my opinion, there's more consistency with the person who started this particular piece. We don't always end up, for instance, if I was up for election this year and choosing not to run, um, I would have, as chair of Ways and Means, ha have to put something in place and hand it over to somebody else. So there's no consistency or rationale behind that. So accounting for every other year or whatever the schedule is with council, which it is every other year, uh, we might get a whole new council. And so what happened, like when I came on board and Otis was chair of finance committee, or ways and means, I'm sorry, I'm stuck in the old. Um, and come January, now it's kind of like, okay. Uh, so yeah. I, I'm just pointing out that yeah. it's no, I, nothing I perfect. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. There are some glitches, yeah. Um, I just ask that you speak with departments on this because their budgets are due in January. Mm -hmm. it's an incredible yeah. amount of work so i mean they're already working on them oh i understand yeah. no, I'm just uh, totally the budget yeah. is now and i have to do the memo on guidelines um so okay i think this was a helpful discussion it, no, i, I really appreciate I, everyone I, being very uh candid about their thoughts and uh, once right. like i said once we're done with this work um, I will work with the council and a and I think is where it would go to um, make some tweaks to uh, what's what's in writing about this. Yeah. The only thing I would say is if when you decide on when you should put it in a date that your recommendation is due to the mayor by. Because so you can work backwards from there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's a great point. Thank you, Liz. That's important to, to recognize. Yep. Yep. So are we ready to adjourn? Oh, do I get a motion? Oh. <laughs> Make a motion. And a second? A second. And the evening is getting closer and closer. There we go. <laughs> we are adjourned. I hope so. Thank you, Thank you all. However, um, I'm going to grab you for 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> if you have, have a nice weekend. Um, if Jean can hang on. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah. I just thought rather than.
Okay. Are you okay with that? Okay. Uh, that thing that I told you I had to talk to you about, I might as well do it now. And uh, I mean, really, there's. Okay. You want me to go away? I'm no, no. I mean, I'm just going to say we can sit here and do it. I don't think it matters to. Um, as long as, as, we're, not, um, as, long as <laughs> we're not. Hello. <laughs>